All right, so we're gonna be taking a look inside of this 13 inch MacBook Air. It might, I think it's 13.3 inch, but uh, the model is A1466 uh, 2017 model. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is undo all the screws on the bottom using a Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all the screws. You do wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. Uh, basically, I put the flat side down like this in the pattern I remove them, so you have four, basically a uh, rectangle shape, sorry. Four at the top, four at the bottom, and then one on each side. So basically I will put them like that in the pattern on my desk. All right, if this helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right. So let's go ahead and continue removing these screws. The customer told me that on this MacBook, the trackpad um, isn't working, but I found out it's the button, not, not the trackpad itself. So for some reason it's not clicking properly. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Hopefully we won't need to replace the trackpad, but uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, so it was missing one screw here. So we got all the rest out. We're gonna grab from back here and then kind of wiggle and pull this up. And there we go. Um, you can see it's pretty dusty in here. Actually, I don't know if you can see the dust, but you can see it on this aluminum plate. Okay, so I'm actually going to take this out and clean it up first. Um, but let's go ahead and remove the battery. All right. So we're going to switch over from my Pentalobe screwdriver to a Torx or T5. Torx 5 or T5. And we're going to remove all five screws holding the battery in place. Okay, just like this. I might have to move the thing later for a better uh, thumbnail, but let's go ahead and just remove all these screws. Okay, just like that. So the battery, we don't really need to remove for the trackpad issue, or we shouldn't have to unless we're replacing the trackpad. But I'm going to re remove the battery just to be safe because I do have to work on other components. They said the USB port here is not working. So we'll see if they're lucky, it could be this cable, but it can also be this board or it can be, there's another cable running here, but I think that's for the charge port. So, all right, once you've removed all the screws for the battery, what you're gonna do is get underneath here. You can lift from anywhere, but I found it works easier to get underneath from here. You can lift it up, get your hand underneath. All right, you don't wanna just lift the battery out and then we're twist, basically propping it up like this with our fingers. Um, you don't want to just pull it backwards. So you prop it up like that, then grab this cable here. And then while you're holding that, you kind of just wiggle it. Let me actually zoom in. So what just happened? How did I flip it that way? Round. There we go. Okay. I don't know what I accidentally pressed for it to do that. That was kind of weird. All right. So while you're holding the battery up, what you're going to do is grab the plastic tab and then you kind of just wiggle it as you pull it. And there you go. And there we go, now we got the battery out. So this is why you wanna prop the battery up. If you don't, sometimes the lip of the battery right here can get caught on here and I've seen people tear this cable. So you wanna be very careful with that. You do wanna make sure that you're kind of propping the battery up slightly. Okay, so again, the trackpad is having issues clicking. So if I press on it, you can see it's it's not really clicking, it's just wobbling up and down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try tightening this screw here and see if we can fix that. Let me see what screw this needs. Oh, there's also a, that, oh, that's broken plastic, okay. There's bits of like broken plastic and stuff in here. Okay, so let me find out what screw. This might actually be a T5 as well. But uh, just to make sure, let me try with a T6 or something. Okay, no, it's a T5. Okay, so we're gonna use a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver here. And basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna loosen and tighten this screw, okay? So I'm gonna twist it backwards to loosen it a little. And then you wanna get underneath with your hand here, okay? And you can actually feel the difference. So right now it's just loose, not clicking anything. We're gonna tighten the screw now. So twist it clockwise. Okay, still nothing, still nothing, still nothing, still nothing. All right, I don't know if you can hear the difference. Now it's actually making a clicking sound. Okay, and that's what you actually want. So 
You can hear the clicking and you see the trackpad's not really moving that much. But as I undo it, you can see now the trackpad is just moving up and down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take this screw out. <clears throat> and we're going to add some uh, red thread locker here to try and hold the screw in place better. Basically over time what happened is the screw came loose and then it was no longer pushing against the button on the trackpad. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of this on there. You don't want too much, all right, as you can see. I put very little just on one side. Okay, as you can see, I rotate it and there's nothing all around. So we're just getting a tiny bit on there. Okay, <clears throat> next thing you're gonna wanna keep seeing if it's clicking. So we're gonna twist it backwards to get the threads in and then we're gonna now twist it clockwise. Okay, and keep pressing this until you feel it start clicking. Okay, I feel it clicking and that should be good. If you want, you can like see what happens when you over tighten it. You'll see it, it like clicks it permanently and that's not good. So you wanna back off a little bit, loosen it until you find the right amount of clicking, okay, that you want. So that feels good. We're gonna flip the laptop over, the MacBook Air over now and just test it. And you can see now it's good, all right? Before it wouldn't click like this when it's up. All right, so trackpad should be good to go. <clears throat> Let's go ahead now and check the um, USB port here. So what I'm gonna do, uh, just to be safe after removing the battery, we're gonna press and hold the power button here for about 15 seconds. This will drain any residual power and make it a little safer to work on. It's not super important for what we're doing, but if you do pull out the screen cable, you can badly damage the computer, or if you drop something metal on the computer you can damage it so just to be safe it's a good idea to press and hold this it only takes 15 seconds so might as well take those 15 seconds to um, eliminate the risk or at least re greatly reduce the risk of costing yourself several hundred dollars in repair all right so now we're going to pull this connector out i just use the two corners like that and wiggle and pull it same thing with this one wiggle and pull it and then there's an adhesive under there. I'm just gonna peel this up. Most of the time the adhesive is just gonna tear because it's like a foam. Um, so yeah, you don't really need to worry about that. But it helps to peel from the left side, but as you can see, it just tore the foam anyway. So don't worry about it. It doesn't affect the computer. I think it's more like a security thing so Apple knows that you messed with it. If you want, you can um, get a double stick tape and then stick it back on there. All right, so the charge port part seems fine. So this part goes into the charge port. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna grab that cable. I'm gonna just wiggle it out a little bit. So wiggle while I pull. Okay. All right, you can see it's slowly coming out and there we go. So I'm gonna just pull that out a little bit and then push it back in. So that way if there is a little corrosion messing up the pins that will help fix that. This is the microphone connector right there and you got the speaker going up into there. And then this cable is the eyesight or webcam cable, which connects right here. So I'm not going to mess with that. Um, this does seem to be seated properly, so it shouldn't be an issue with the spacing from the computer. So what we're going to do, let's just to be safe, we're going to loosen this screw up here. Okay, just loosen it, not take it out and loosen the screw down here. Okay, and now you, I don't know if you can see the slight movement, but now this board can move just barely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pull it over as much as I can this direction. And if it is just a loose connection or something um, or not reaching far enough, then that should fix that issue. Okay. All right. You can keep holding that and then tighten the screws down. And now it should be in the proper alignment. I'm going to clean these connectors off just in case these are bad. Okay, this looks fine, so I don't know. We'll brush this off. All right, now I'm going to take this outside, clean all the dust off. Basically, I'll brush this down and then use an electric air blower to blow all the dust away. Um, you don't want to use the air cans. Um, if that's all you have and that's all you use, you want to do it in quick bursts. So I have this handheld thing that I use. If you wanna know what that is, I can post a link, just let me know in the comment section below. But this, basically, you squeeze it and it blows a lot of air out. So I can even move the camera, like it looks like it's really close, but it's actually like a foot away from the camera or from my phone. 
All right, so this thing is pretty good, pretty powerful, and yeah. So if you use the can, you don't want to just hold the thing down. You want to do like ch -ch 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 -ch, because if you press and hold, it's gonna make this really cold, and condensation will build up, and then you're gonna end up with liquid damage on your computer. But anyways, let me go ahead and clean all the dust off, and then we'll be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So we cleaned it up. You can see this part is a lot cleaner than before. All right, it's not perfect, but much, much cleaner than before. All right. So, and the inside's also a lot cleaner now. All right, you don't got all the dust and gunk in the fan area. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that cable back and see if the USB is working. I might have to ask them for the password, so I might not be able to keep that in the video. Um, but... Yeah, we're just gonna plug this back. And sometimes this cable can actually be bad, but usually it doesn't go bad on its own, so that'd be weird. Um, most likely we will have to replace this whole board. Um, and you can actually test that without connecting all of this in. You can get the replacement board. You can have it out here connected with this, and you can have that power thing connected here, but you don't wanna rest it on top of here because those metal pieces from here will short out the other one. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Oops, I just had another text message from a, another customer. So I'm gonna test the keyboard at, or the trackpad at least and make sure it's working okay. Let's go ahead and get the battery back in. Okay, so we wanna keep holding this up slightly while you get the battery connector in, okay? It helps to sometimes use the plastic tab that's attached, all right? And then pinch the two pieces together just like this, all right? Then we're going to drop the battery into place. I'm going to use both hands to pinch it in. All right. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and put the five T5 or Torx 5 screws back into place. The ones in these bottom corners are shorter than the rest. And I think the middle one is completely threaded, while the ones back here have like smooth parts on part of the threading. So if you happen to mix them up, hopefully that will help you out. All right, actually, they all have the smooth thing. Okay, never mind. So I think these three are the same, but it's always a good idea to try and keep the screws in order and not mix them up. So yeah, try and do that if you can. All right, so we'll get all these screws back in and then we're gonna go ahead and test the computer. And just to be safe, I'm gonna make sure the LCD LVDS connector is pulled in all the way. Sometimes that can come loose while cleaning it, but pretty rarely. All right, let's go ahead and get the cover back on. Click that into place. We'll flip this back over. Let's power it up and see what we got. I'm going to do a PRAM and SMC reset. So control option shift on the left side. Power button does an SMC reset. If you have the charger in and it's orange, once you do that, it'll turn green and then back to orange. That's how you know you did it properly. Now we're going to do a PRAM reset. Power it up. Command option P and R. Hold those buttons down. Assuming there's battery left, which there should be because um, it was working earlier. So yeah, okay, I see the screen coming on. So if you're doing the PRAM reset right, you'll see the screen go off and then it should come back on by itself. Um, if you want, you can keep holding it and usually you'll hear the startup chime like that. And that's how you know you did it right. If you keep holding it, it'll chime a second time. Um, their Mac was muted, so that's why it didn't make the chime the first time, but there we go. So we're not going to press the power button and there you go. It turns itself back on. So now we're going to let this boot back up and trackpad's still good, even with the battery um, screwed into place. So that's a good sign. Um, okay. Now the Apple is loading. Oh, okay. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to shut this down. I'm going to have to ask them for the password to make sure, but let's go ahead. Okay. So the clicking works. That's good. And I'll ask them for the password to test the USB thing. If you need to replace the USB port um, and you don't know how, I have videos where I show how to do that. It's almost um, part of a step of replacing the screen, but you don't need to replace the screen. All right. So anyways, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you out. Sorry. Um, thanks for watching. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, um, I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.